Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Hey everybody, Barry here again. This is going to be a long one. I don't know how long, but we'll see. Because I got a lot of wiring to do. And by a lot, I mean the whole truck. It's all got to be done. <sighs> long story short, three years ago, I rebuilt the truck again. Rewired the whole truck. In a rush. Wanted to get it on the road. Nice days coming, that kind of thing. And I didn't do any diagrams. I didn't write anything down. No pinouts. Nothing. I have no idea where all the wires go. On the dash is a rat's nest. I am not excited for this. So I'm going to show you under the dash. I don't think I've showed anybody under the dash yet. If you're squeamish, you don't like horror movies, things keep you up at night, I'd suggest skipping ahead. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's let's look up and under here. Oh look. Oh look. This is this is not what I'm used to seeing. What an absolute mess up there. This is how I drove it. We don't we don't need to look at that anymore. I just got shivers. Obviously, this is not gonna look like that very soon. I've got to go in the container and grab as much wiring as I can because I'm going to put new ground wires in, new uh, battery cables, that kind of thing. I'm going to put battery in the back, I think. I think. Don't quote me on that yet, but I haven't gotten that far because I have sort of an idea. The radiator is going back here. The rad I have has its own cap, so I can use a cap back there. That means there are no, there's no use for this thing. So I can take this out of it, run a power wire right down to my starter, run a block over here somewhere where I can bolt on a main power wire, and then run it elsewhere. I don't need this bottle here anymore. That'll make it a little bit easier to run my heater core hoses up to the turbo, well, both turbos, and back, separate of all this stuff, because, you know, I can put my battery right there maybe that would save me a lot of voltage drop it would save me from having to bolt something else on the floor of the bed because there's going to be enough stuff back there with the radiator and the inner fenders and the fuel cell that's back there that's enough for all that plus i don't need to run like 15 feet about the positive battery cable so we'll see about that in a few minutes but i'm gonna go see what kind of wire i have and see where we can get okay here we have a bucket full of wire. There we go. So that's a bucket full of wire. And I've got a bunch of positive cable and some really, really heavy stuff. And I've got one of these little fuse blocks from a Chev truck. It's got three relays, few fuses, and I'm hoping that I might be able to use just this to run my engine harness. So I can run my engine harness separate from the body harness. And that would be really, really nice. I've also got a bunch of connectors here that I cut out of scrap vehicles. I always keep them. Like if it's got a male and a female connector on it, I cut it out and keep it. That way I could run this to my gauges or something and I can just unplug it if I need to. That's always good. All these positive and negative wires from the Chev trucks. Like this here is good to have. That's only got three wires in it, but I can pin more in no problem. And yeah, that one's great. Lots of good stuff here. And a couple of relays. So I should basically have everything I need. I might have to buy a few feet of wire, but that's not a big deal. There's already a lot of wire in the truck itself. So hopefully I could just reuse what I have there and clean it up a lot, make it look a lot better. And I also have a fuse block with um, a bus bar attached to it. And that is this little beauty right here. It's made by Blue C. Part number is 5026, as far as I remember. I think that's the only part number. And let's open it up and have a look. This one is deadly. So I like this right here. You just pull on the tab and it comes off. And I think you can label them and stuff. I got a cricket, so I might just make up a few labels. And here is um, the grounds. This actually has a ground bus on it, so you can run all your ground wires to here. That's wicked for inside the dash with gauges. This is your main ground here that goes to the body. 
main power that goes up to the battery, and here are your fused power outputs. And it can take either ATO or ATC fuses. And the ATC, I think, is like a mini fuse or something. And uh, that's a nice, clean way to do it. And this snaps on. Done. And also, in case I need them, here are two bus bars that my buddy John Wiseman brought out to me. They are jumpers across this way. Not along here, but if I need to, I can jump wires across each one. So that would allow me to connect a bunch of circuits to one bar instead of running a connector or something like that. So that could go in tandem with these, you know, something like that. But I just got the truck cleaned out because it was absolutely full of junk. And here is my temporary setup that I had for the truck. This was the positive and negative. I just had the battery right here, fuel hose. There's the return, all that fun stuff. That's all gonna come out of here. And this is the fuse block setup that I had in it last year. As you can see, it worked, but it was quite untidy. And that was the view from it underneath. It was easy to work on, but you know, definitely not ideal. So I'm just gonna go and unbolt that, take this out, and I might mount the new fuse block like right in here somewhere. Step one, remove every inch of wire out of the truck. Woo! Ooh, nice gauges, so pretty. Ah! What is that? What? People can change. I've got the gauges removed. Good. Now we can see what kind of mess I'm dealing with here. Most of this really is power wires, sensor wires. Here is my wipers. That's also gotta be wired in. This down here is the line lock switch, obviously ignition. Here is a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug that I use for charge my phone, whatever. This is the check engine light. Down here is <laughs> Just a $20 eBay wide band, or actually it was a narrow band. So that's just coming off. I'm not putting that on there. And, you know, flasher. I've got to wire in my signal light switches, all that stuff. So it's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of work that was put into this one wire at a time with absolutely zero plan. That's why I'm doing this today. And also here is the shift light. I've got all the wires labeled. What I did was trace the wires back and label them as I was taking them out because of course I didn't label anything before. So here's battery hot, ignition hot, uh, ground. And this is, a, this is a GPS speedometer I got off eBay for like 150 bucks. And um, here's the sensor wire for the GPS thing. Here is a water temperature sensor that broke. So I might see if I can get a new one of those because that one was really easy to put in. And here's an oil pressure switch. Kirk Tarrant gave me this one, but I broke the sensor when I pulled the 350 out. So that's just a dead sensor now. And everything else is pretty much labeled up. So here's my tack wiring that's getting ridiculously short now. <laughs> I've only got a couple more cuts before that's done. Wide band is here. So this stuff here is actually really easy to hook up. I can run it to probably each ignition wire. I can run to one wire and go to the fuse block. Each sensor wire, of course, is going to have to go out to its individual sensor or reference or whatever, but the powers and the grounds should go right to one wire. Done. No fooling around. And I think that might be where my bus bar comes in or something like that. This fuse block is going to go in under the dash, like I said. 
So right now I've got a lot of wiring to pull out. I'm still gonna bomb away at that. I am going to rewire everything, which I'm not really excited for, but I am excited for to have it done as cleanly as I can do. This is not gonna look like one of the big wiring guys did it because of course I'm not that. I'm just a guy who wants to build a truck and go fast. So it'll look a lot better than it does now. I got most of the wiring ripped out, except for the few things that can actually stay. Like these two here are the positive and negative for my windshield wiper motor. That's right there. This is the wiring for the shift light, which I have labeled tack signal, negative, positive. And over here is the connectors for, I think that's for the line lock. That's the switch right here. That's the line lock, yep. This is the switch for my wipers here, and just a couple things like that's the plug-in for the uh, accessory outlet. Signal light switch, I didn't need to cut all that stuff out. I'll just trim it where, where I need to kind of thing. And uh, out here and under the hood, we have, what is this? This is the wiring to the dimmer switch, which is the old school button style one there. So I'll leave that intact. There's no need to disturb that. These are the wires that are going back there to the tail lights and all that stuff. So I just need to find out, uh, this one here I actually have labeled, so that's the brake light switch. So that one already goes back to the brake lights. And uh, I'm like 95% sure this is my signal light switches here. And this uh, is either, I think that's a power actually. It should have been going to a fuse block. That's why it has two wires on it because I got a heavy gauge wire here and two lighter gauge wires going into the fuse block. So that should be power, but to where I cannot remember. And back here we see that connector. So this is the seven wire trailer stuff here. And this is the connector that clicks into back here on the back of the bed. Let's see if I can find it. Oh yeah, it's right here, look at that. And that's the connector to the bed. So I should be able to just plug this in and tie these wires where they need to go, like the brake light switch and, and my signal lights, which are inside of here, like we said. And that side of it is already wired. That'll be a huge, huge relief there if I can wire all that in and not have to worry about it. This stuff here is, um, these potentially might be the signal lights, maybe, or the headlights. And these here are either the signal lights or headlights, but it's one of them <laughs> for the front. So it's, it's really relatively easy to wire that stuff in because it's already there. I just gotta run wires out to it. And then comes the extra, extra, extra stuff. Like, Wideband number one with the boost controller and all that fun stuff, the serial data cables and all that. 
two-step, the fuse block that's going under the dash, uh, all of these gauges, I need to wire in my fuel voltage, uh, I don't know what that's called, what do you call it, speedometer, tack, my other wide band and boost gauge. I had to put uh, spray on tail light tint on that because it glows super bright blue. So I've got a lot of wiring to do. And I'm finding it particularly hard to keep motivated today because I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. But it's got to be done. That's it. Whoops. Let's, let's get it done. I don't know what I'm going to start at first. I really don't. I might start the whole tail lights thing first. And maybe I'll put a battery like down here and, and just test each wire with the plugins before I go too far into, um, you know, wire stuff yet if I don't know where it goes. But yeah, I'll figure it out in a second. We'll see where we get. This might look kind of funny, but I'm starting to get somewhere with it. I know because I cut the wires off, which I never should have, but I kind of got ahead of myself. I know that, where are they? And they're missing. Hmm. Okay, here we go. So this one has two red wires on it. Green on a trailer is right rear tail lights and signals. So where I have mine wired separately, because I have my signal lights up here. These are my functional signal lights. And these are just tail lights and brake lights. Then I have the double beams right here for the tail and the brake. And here's my ground. My signal lights are separate. So green should be the right rear. And one of these two wires right here is my signal lights for the front, or it should be. So I've got a motorcycle battery hooked up to a ground on my hood pin. That's to the ground cable. And which one? Oh, it's over there, look at that. Perfect. So we can see, by me touching this one, that that's the right signal light. So this one here should tie into the green wire right there. And I'll just kind of splice that back in there. I'll probably tear off that tape redo it so this is the other side let's see yeah look at that so this is left side there's the right and i guess i'll go and redo what i did wrong the first time and i think i can actually verify this because my ground is still hooked up to the bed which hopefully should be grounded to the frame because i got it all bolted on if i plug in this connector to there and touch that wire onto the little battery, then this tail light should come on for what color wire? The brown wire. Let's try it, see what happens. I've got my connector plugged in on the back here and assuming the ground is good to the frame from the bed, and I'll run a new ground wire anyway, I can test function of this light and I can test function of my park and brake lights. And I'm really hoping that this is gonna work. That would give me a concrete way to know, well, that everything worked well and everything is connected correctly. So let's just see what we have. Um, let's try it. connect the brown wire which should be the left signal hopefully no it is not up okay let's see about the brake lights oh brake lights work so that's a good sign let's try the other side signal just to see in case i got it wrong There we go. So, the green is actually the left side signal. 
That's sweet. Um, what would this be? Is it park lights? I don't think it's lit up. Might be the other side, actually. Oh, I can't see it. Let's see what this brown wire turns on. Or this brown wire. Potentially also nothing? Oh, look! Sweet! That's the park lights. So the park light turns on, and then these are the brakes. Great. So I know there's the park lights now. This is so exciting! I love wiring. So I've got what should be my right signal light wire just jammed into the battery here. I was trying to figure out why it didn't come on, but it was a pretty simple issue. When I welded in a patch for the bed, there was a ground wire running down to the side that had to be cut out because it was in a really rough section of the bed. So that ground wire is right there. You can't see it. That ground wire is right here. So if I stick that on a nice clean part of the weld, there we go. Now we got our signal lights. So it's as simple as drilling a new hole, clean it up, run the bolt through it, and then we got all the taillights done. That's mint. I love how these taillights flash. Like it's not an on off, on off like on newer cars. It's sort of a glowing, slow flash like all the old vehicles. And I've got a pretty slow flasher in it, so it's like clink, 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 clink. It's not really, really fast, so it gives it a kind of old school look. And the signal lights for the front are actually trailer lights. <laughs> They're the ones with the rubber grommets that you just pop the light in. These trucks actually had sort of like a beehive style. It was a light that was about this long and it came out to a nice point and it had rings all around it and it was clear. And that's what I'd have for signal lights on the front, but I don't have them. So I may do with what I have and put trailer lights in it. <laughs> and they work just fine. They're amber. So, uh, and it actually doesn't look terrible, just a flat light in there. So I'm gonna go wire this in because that'll be a big motivator to actually have something accomplished tonight. Although tearing out all that big rat's nest that I wired in before was a pretty big accomplishment, but at least I'll have something that works. So I'm starting to get somewhere with this. My high beam and low beam headlight wires are here. And these are the three wires, one right here and these two that I was talking about from the dimmer switch right here. So I twisted those together just to test to see. And I'm now gonna stick this one onto power. Okay, and we got some headlights here by the looks of it. Yep, both headlights. And obviously electrical is only running through one of those two because of my dimmer switch. So when I hit the switch, something should happen. Not a lot. I'm sure that little tiny battery isn't liking probably 15 amps from those headlights, but I have power on both circuits. So that means my headlight circuit is good. My grounds I'll probably clean up, but I will be running grounds to every piece of sheet metal on this truck anyway, because I hate chasing electrical issues. But either way, I don't know if we got brighter or not, but whatever. I know everything here works. Now I was trying to come up with a way that's simple to hook up this fuse block and run the relays, that kind of thing. And I can't, I think I came up with a plan. This is a continuous duty solenoid or relay. The part number is GPC1001 and that's CarQuest Premium Electrical. So, of course, this, like any other relay, uses a power and a ground from, say, the ignition switch to turn on the relay, and then all of your grunt of the power goes through these big terminals. So, I hook the battery 
to here, run this out to my fuse block right here to provide power to all the fuses. So I turn on my ignition switch, power jumps from here over to here, and now I've got uh, fuses for everything on one single relay. I don't need to run a relay for the headlights and then a relay for this and a relay for that and all that. It should all run through this. Mainly because that is meant to hold like 300 amps or 250 amps or whatever. Now I do have to check and see how much amps this is rated for. And hey, what better time than now? All right, took me a minute, but I found the sheet again. Specifications. Amperage maximum operating is 30 amps per circuit. So that's 30, 30, 30, 30, a little. Maximum amperage operating Wait, that's just backwards from that. What? 100 amps per block. So 100 amps per block is not really serious. I'm gonna run a separate relay for my fuel pumps because they're gonna be a big draw because I got two big pumps. And I'll run separate relays for my electric fans because that's a big draw. Then I'm left with what? Headlights, probably 10 amps. Tail lights, amp each. And like the boost controller and the gauges. There's not a whole lot of electrical in this truck. I'm not running air conditioning or power seats, power windows. There's not even heat. There is no heat. I run a wiper blades. That's probably my biggest draw that's gonna be on this fuse block. So that's gonna save me a lot of time because I would have to run a headlight relay. Um, I'd have to run relay for all the gauges. Just, just because I like to do that kind of thing. Like it's probably not even necessary, but I've got to run a relay for the ignition anyway because the ignition has to turn something on and I don't want all of that going through that little ignition switch. So why not use one of these big relays to turn on the fuse block and then everything runs off that. And then on this side, I've got a ground bus right here that potentially, if I felt like it, I could run all my battery hots to here and run this one directly to the battery so that it's always on. And this can be my battery hots for like say the PCM you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I haven't gotten that far yet, we'll see. But uh, my brake lights need to be on battery hot because apparently that's how they're wired, whatever. I don't know, anyway. I'm rambling. I'm just figuring stuff out as I go, so try and keep up. I'm gonna try to keep up. I have no idea what I'm doing. Thank you. Well, I'm picking, I'm picking, I'm making more progress and stopping in for a report. I've been the last half hour trying to hook up this line lock and the switch is what's been kicking my butt. So this is a switch right here that when you turn it on, it lights up and it has three terminals. You can't see them, they're back there. There's three terminals on the back of the switch and they're labeled power, load, ground. And the ground is what turns the light on. Power and load, of course, is what circulates power to the line lock. And I had it hooked up backwards, so when I turned the switch off, it would turn on. The light would turn on when it was off. What are going on? Anyway, I got it figured out. So I've got the headlights hooked across to the headlight switch here. And this is the power in to the headlights. That's gonna go into the fuse block when I hook it up. Here are the two signal light wires. They're gonna to tie together there. This is all gonna be loomed. It's not gonna be, of course, left like this. This is the power out for me testing the line lock. I've got the line lock grounded to itself. Sorry about the blurriness here. I got the line lock grounded to the mount that it's on. I checked that's a really good ground there. And I've just gotta hook up this power wire. And then the power wire for the line lock is right there on the supply. So that will go over to the uh, fuse block. So I'll just label that line lock supply. The line lock itself comes with a little tiny momentary switch that is normally off, I'll say, normally open. 
and you hold the button down, it's on, you let go, it springs off by itself. I like to put it on an on off switch so that when I turn it on, it stays on because you can hold the button on because you can turn the line lock on. Then I've got full range, clutch, gas, brake, gear shifter, steering wheel. I don't have to go holding onto a button trying to shift gears because this is a manual transmission, of course. And then when I get it up in say third or fourth gear, I'm doing a real heavy burnout, flick the line lock off and roll out of it and try not to run into a wall or another car. So I just, I don't know, I just like to live dangerously. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's pretty much where I am right now. I'm gonna turn that back off. And um, I've got a ground bus right here. That'll be fine. That's a solid ground right there. I can stack a couple there. And I'm just doing some testing at the moment. So it's nice to know that my headlights and taillights are really, really easy to hook up. That was what I was mainly concerned about. Now I've got the line lock just about done. At least it's figured out. And then I can go ahead and figure out my wideband. I'm gonna run two widebands on this. It's something I haven't done before. I bought the Innovate wideband slash boost controller slash fail safe slash shift light <laughs> kit off of Charles Williams. That's this kit right here. It's got a three port Mac valve and there's the map sensor. There's the gauge boost controller, all that fun stuff. Everything is in there. And I'm gonna run that one for, I'll say maybe the left bank and I'll run my AEM wideband for the right bank because why not have two widebands? If I got an injector failing on one bank, nice to know <laughs> that right side might be 10% leaner, it might be 14.7 over here and 15.6 over there. It might be really, really good to know that. So I might as well do double the wiring and double the headache. And I've got a couple dead gauges that I can just stab the new gauge into anyway. So why not? Let's continue wiring. So I've been trying to figure out where to put this fuse block. And I thought about maybe right there. That's kind of tight though, but it would work, but it'd be kind of hard to get fuses out. And I'd have to take the dash out every time. But then I thought about maybe, I don't know, in here. And then I thought about on this flat spot I don't really like that either, because my ignition is going to be right here. So I've got to figure out where this is going to go. I suppose I probably could put it right there. That's not terrible there. I still have to take the dash out of it, but that's not even a huge deal. Because it's just four of these little screws right there. And it's easy to get at. I'd be able to get at my fuses. I'd be able to put wires in there. I think that'll actually work. Fuse block is mounted up. Look at that. They even got room to get the wires to go kind of up around here and and wherever they need to go. I'll use the bottom circuits first just because they're easier to get at. And here is my main power stud. Here's the main ground stud, which I suppose I could run my main ground from here right down to there, bolt it on, and then I can run all my separate grounds to here. And it looks like I have 12. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve power outlets too. So that's perfect. I can run power wires from that fuse block right to my line lock switch, right to my wiper switch, uh, wideband, boost controller, shift light, everything. Anything that I need power to is right there. That is so cool.
I'm making some progress. Finally making progress. Man. I know it's been a lot of time lapse. I apologize for that, but going snippy snip, solder, heat shrink, snip, snip, screw, crimp. It's only so much of that. Let's look at it. So looking here, it's looking way cleaner. Like I gotta kind of tie this headway a little bit, tie these down here a little bit, but to have them all individually uh, placed in here is wonderful. This stuff up here is for the shift light. The wiring comes down from there. This green wire here, which is kind of strangly there or dangly or whatever, that's the tax signal, which I'm not ready to hook up yet. But, dude, look, the flasher, I got double zip tied for extra security. Um, that comes out of here. I tested it, got it all hooked up. They get hooked up over here somewhere. Everything is hooked up. The flashers are hooked up, the headlights are hooked up, the brake lights are hooked up, my wipers are hooked up. That one needs a little bit of wiggly, I gotta fix that. Uh, line lock here is hooked up. Obviously I don't have power to any of this yet, but it is seriously getting there. Well, we're at one of those wish me luck moments. We'll see. I've got some fuses put in. I've just got this regular old red power wire here that I'm going to put on positive. I've got this clamp here that I'm going to try to clamp on there. I don't think it's going to work. I don't know. Anyway, uh, we'll try it and see how it goes. And my main goal here is to hopefully make this work. Oh, that's, that's dumb. That's too loose. Well, I thought it was going to work. I guess not. Uh, I just want to see if uh, if this fuse block thing is going to work. Make sure I got all my lights wired correctly. I don't have an ignition switch or anything hooked up, so I'm mimicking an ignition switch. Ooh. 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 We might have something. We might have something. Uh, let me secure this better and we'll walk around. Okay, more vice grips. Oh, be nice. Stop sparking. All right, so it's sort of clipped in place. And we can see that for some reason this is lit up, which is not really a big deal. But... Oh, ho, ho, ho. even the four ways work. All right, so let's do a walk around really quick. We seem to have headlights. Yep, we've got headlights. Let's go back and see if we have park lights. Please have park lights. Yes, we have park lights and both of them work. Man. All right, so that's, uh, that's two big wins. I haven't tried this yet, so we're gonna see if everything works. We know it goes tick, but does it work? Okay, oh, I love these tail lights. That is so cool. And check out the front. Yep, left works correctly. I was kind of worried because I couldn't find a schematic on uh, on Google for these grody signal light switches. And I just kind of connected two together and hoped that it worked. Let's see if the other one works. Yep. Oh, also I hooked up a ground wire just inside of there. So that's why that one works now. And we'll check out the front right signal, see if that works. Mint. And the bulbs are really, really dim. And for some reason, I don't think you can see it on the film, but this one is actually brighter than that one is, which is weird. I always noticed that my headlights were horrible. So let's turn this off and I'm just going to do that and see what we got now. Okay, and now both headlights are pretty dim anyway. So that's the low beam, I guess. But they are basically candles. Like, you could look directly into that for an hour and it wouldn't hurt you. So I'm definitely going to have to come up with a better idea for headlights. 
I've been looking into LEDs, but they're like really expensive. So I'm uh, definitely not into LED uh, H6024 headlight bulb budget here. Let's unclip this. Well, it all works. So far, uh, 10 out of 10. Oh, I'm so excited. The headlights, I'm gonna have to figure it out. I don't know what it is. Last year, like, it was horrible. Driving nighttime in this was so sketchy. Considering hood rat stuff is done at night. Uh, yeah, kind of sketchy. When you're looking 10 feet ahead of you at the yellow line, make sure you're not going off the road. But this is a huge win so far. So I'm gonna end this video on a high note because I'll take a win whenever I can. And I will start up, what will I start up next? Do I have to wire the fans? I've got to wire in the fuel injection, I've got to wire in the fuel pumps. I have to plumb the fuel lines, which is from the pumps up to the rail and then the return back to the tank. I've got to do my cooling system. There's a whole lot to come yet. I'm hoping to have it done in a couple of weeks time and uh, it'll be another couple of weeks of videos. This is, this is going strong. I'm really happy with how much content I can put out on this. So I'm gonna go home and go to bed because it's like two o'clock in the morning here. And uh, I'm gonna go get some sleep. So thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks to all the new subscribers and my YouTube members and patrons. If you wanna check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash station road rat rods. And the YouTube members link is down here. And also check out my Teespring store. We've got a lot of new designs out there, including shirts and hoodies with this license plate on it. Just a 10 second description. This is license plate that I took two or three years to try to find the correct plates to spell dead end. And that included a dealer plate, trailer plates, various cars I found in the woods. And uh, I thought it, it just suited the truck. And I thought it'd be really, really cool. And there's one shirt that has dead end plate like all over it, everywhere, front to back is completely covered with with those places, so it's just kind of neat. <sighs> so, thanks for checking it out, and thanks for watching. Have a great night, everybody.